Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Technology Tip Thursday. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. This is one of my favorite videos that I am easily have ever recorded. I'm going to show you how to embed and play videos directly within the Power BI report. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So in my previous videos, you saw that I used the slicers to be able to look at players, images, and Power BI. And I'm using the NBA API. And for this video, I'm continuing to use the NBA API. There's so much good information in there. And I had an idea that popped in my head of, I wonder if I could download the MP4 videos and get the raw link for it that allows me to actually play the, the actual video itself within the report. So what I found is that there is an endpoint called play by play V2 that allows you to actually put in some information and get different events that happen. Um, there's a lot of documentation out there. Again, NBA underscore API is the actual API that I'm using. If you go in here, you see the JSON and then you see the list of columns that are available. Um, you see the game ID, event number, so on and so forth, right? There's just a lot of good information in here. But the big piece I want to know is like, how can I use this to get the attributes, but then how do I actually get the MP4 available for it? So I did some Googling by all means, I am not an expert in this, but um, one of the things that I did find within my Google search is that someone had posted some code here that basically allows you to look up the event if you have the actual event ID and the game ID. So those were the two biggest pieces that I needed for this to work is I needed an event ID, which typically I just guessed and I did one through four. I saw four was on here, so I left it in here. But the biggest piece I needed was the game ID. So that I actually already had from my previous video, I was able to get the actual game ID. So once I had that piece of information, I was actually able to come in here and input that game ID that I tested. So the game ID that I'm using is the Los Angeles Lakers versus the Phoenix Suns game. And this is the individual game ID. So if I come in here and just input it and update it, and I'm leaving the event ID the same as number four, if I run this file, we'll see that it actually will give me the MP4 link directly. So now that I have the link that I need, I can actually come in here and see that this is actually a public video that I can click on. So just for testing purposes, we'll see that it's now actually MP4 video. So now that I have that, I know I now I have a public facing video that I can now use for different purposes. So now that I have the MP4, the next challenge is how do I actually implement this into Power BI and then how do I scrape multiple uh, links so that I can have multiple events in there. So I went to our good friend chat GPT and I found that there's actual way that I can leverage this information and have it write a Python script. Again, as I said in my first video, not a Python developer by any means, but I took the code from the previous uh, video that I just showed you for the previous link that I just showed you, made sure I had the headers and then I had the, the game ID and then I asked it to input the event numbers on here as well. And then I said, I just want to give me the top 20 list. So this portion is actually dynamic. So if I'm 100 or 120 or what have you, if I change that, it'll give me a list of event IDs that I need. And then it gives me an output and basically runs through it. So just an example of how this works is that I come in here and input this information. And so now that I have play by play, it runs it, spits it out, so on and so forth. And then now I have it to actually export to CSV for me. And so what the actual end data looks like is this now. So now I have not only the raw URL for each event that I need, but I also have the player name and then some other additional information that I needed. So I have a lot of good information in here. I got a, little, a lot of good context. So now I can start figuring out how do I actually get this into Power BI and get this to actually start playing. So now that I have the information I needed, now I need to figure out, all right, how do I get this ready for HTML? So what I found is that there is an HTML custom visual within Power BI. So shout out to the developer who created this, this is a really powerful custom visual that allows you to do this. So um, if you go out here, there's a lot of documentation and I have the post, I have it in my links as well. So you can see exactly what's going on, but you want to download the HTML content file. So if you're actually going into Power BI, you go into either get more visuals or download locally, but for the easiest ways, just get more visuals. If you come in here and select HTML, you'll see HTML content by Daniel Marsh Patrick. Daniel creates all types of great stuff. So, I mean, this is just truly fantastic. Go ahead and download it. You, there's a light version as well, but you can, you can use the main one. I'm using the main one for this example. But once you go in here and download it, you'll see 
now that if I were to just select and drag it on, that it'll tell you the HTML content and it tells you to start creating a measure or a field that contains your HTML values so that you can start leveraging this. So there is some, you know, within here, some simple work examples that he has um, in here that you can leverage outside of just of, of just using just uh, for video stuff. If you're trying to do something like SVGs or different values, he has a lot of good different examples on here. And then he even has like his own like data stories and videos on here as well. So there's a lot of good stuff out there. But for my use case, I wanted to implement this for it to be a actual um, visual or that I need for my actual report. So let's go in here and I know that I needed it to be an HTML video. So when I looked up what I needed for this to work, I went to w3schools.com and looked at HTML and I knew this was the format that I needed. And basically what I needed to do is have the video portion and then the width and then the height. And then as I found, I had the MP4 already. So I just need to make sure that my source was tied to the actual hyperlink itself. And then the rest of it would kind of play out as I need it. So the biggest piece factor here is, is that you can adjust this width and height depending on what it is that you're trying to show. Um, in my example, I think I'm using 500 by 600. Actually, let's go into the data and see. Yeah, 500 by 400. And as you can see, I have the width and height. If I go in here, I have the width and the height. And then I have the actual hyperlink in here as well that I talked about earlier. So now I have my actual HTML code ready available for me to now leverage and use. Now, another thing I also have on here is because I'm trying to build out a star schema model, um, I have now the player ID associated. So player one is the unique ID for the individual player. So for this example, I have LeBron who's 2554 and then I have Anthony Davis who's 203076. So if we go into our actual Power BI model, we'll see that I'm actually able to do a one to many because I have my individual player ID and I connected to player ID one. So now I have my one to many. And then as we used our slicer earlier, I have the URL in my dimension table for the players. So my slicers can now actually interact with this new fact table that I have built out. So now that I have the data model clean, it's really easy. Um, I have the game log that I need for this particular example. I can come in here and then now I can actually drag in video HTML into values. And now what this does now, it actually allows me to scroll and click on multiple visuals that I need. So, you know, right now it's cool, right? If I click on one, it'll play it. If I click on another one, it'll play it as well. Um, and even if I filter LeBron, this will show me all of LeBron's information. So this will click on the things that LeBron's done, so on and so forth. So now I have a good starting point of what I want to need, but what if I don't want the scrolling experience? It really depends on what you want to do right now. You have the capability to kind of customize and do some different things. So, um, now that you have your custom visual on here, you can go ahead and, you know, if you want to remove the background, you can do that. You can, you know, do all types of color stuff that you, that you want to do. Um, let's see, let's see, change the background. So if I don't want the background on here, I can do that. If I want to change the width and height, you know, it's a standard visual that you're used to looking, look and feel that you're used to doing in Power BI. Um, but now let's say I want to actually come in here and add a slicer to this. I can now, I want my width to change. Let's bring this to 500. And then let's move this over some, let's move this over to, 700. Let's do 800. All right, 780. That's fine. Let's do 750. I'm just going to be in picking now. So now that I have this now and I have the scrolling capabilities and I have the width and height that I want, I actually want to create a slicer and get a little bit more descriptive for the information that I want. So in my data set, there's actually a field called video description. I'm sorry, home description that kind of tells me what happened for that individual play. So what I can do is actually bring in this home description value into my Power BI set, and I can now use that as a filter. So if I create a slicer, move this over, and then now if I bring in home description, now I have the capabilities to filter on a little bit more information and provide a little bit more detail. So if I clean this up a little bit, change the properties, I can do the effects, change it, turn it off. 
um, I'm not going to do too much visual stuff on here, but if I wanted to change up some things, um, I can do that, right? I can change up the title, do standard stuff that you're used to doing with a slicer. And then in this example, I have a vertical list, but if I wanted to change it to a title or a drop down, you can do that, right? Just a standard, standard slicer. If I want to do single select, I can do that to where something has to be selected, or I can do multi select because you can scroll down. So really you have the ability now of having that customization there. And then now, as you can see, everything that's been selected for LeBron, you see it now in the home description. So if you want to look at like all the rebounds or all of the free throws that LeBron has made, if I select free throw and then I click my play button, we'll see that now you'll see LeBron's free throw is being played. So now you have the hyperlink. It's not taking you somewhere externally. It's actually playing directly in Power BI itself. I feel like this is really, really powerful. Um, when trying to learn this, I'm using public data. I'm really stressing because I want to learn this that I'm using public data. If you're doing this in an internal environment, just know there are examples out there that say you need to add this to uh, OneDrive or um, different things to get permission in. Just be mindful of the things that you're granted access to for your public MP4 files and make sure that it's really locked down. In this example, because I'm using public service and stuff, um, I'm gonna put this up into a public portfolio and you can all check it out and click around um, because it's directly from NBA.com, right? I don't, I don't have an issue with it. So just be mindful if you're gonna use this technique if you're doing it somewhere internally. But this is how you do this. I feel like this is really great. I feel like I'm just scratching the surface on this. I'm gonna keep diving into this and doing some more cool things. But um, please reach out if you have any questions. Have you used this technique before? Is there something else that you know you would like to have embedded in here as well? Hit me up in the comments. Let me know. I'll post those resources. And again, if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. We'll talk to y'all next week. Have a great one. Thank you.